This is Danny from Plug and Play. Today I got a cool little tutorial for you guys about how to make a quick little paddle scene and more importantly how to incorporate squash and stretch into your animation style. Here we go. To save you guys some time I've gone ahead and animated the first section of this animation and let me walk you through that just to give you guys an idea of what exactly is going on. So to start out with I have this um, null object and then a ball layer, a shape layer and that is parented to this null object. Now this no object is animating up and down in Y space and then I have this paddle down here that is also animating up and down in Y space and also has a little bit of a rotation on that. Um, the anchor point of this paddle is on the handle so it looks like it's rotating as if someone were holding the paddle. Now let's jump right into the main portion of this, uh, this tutorial and that is going to be how to add squash and stretch to this ball right here. Now squash and stretch can be used in a variety of different ways and different scenarios and this is only one of them. But it should give you guys a good foundation of what exactly is squash and stretch and how to accomplish it. So let's go to our null object and we're going to call up the scale property. Now this is the expression that we're going to be using in this uh, tutorial and I will link the uh, original creator of this expression down in the description but it's a really hand handy expression. I use it all the time in my animation and it's a great way to do um, squash and stretch without using any uh, third party plugins. So let's go ahead and copy that and let's go to our null object into the scale property and we're going to, while holding option, click on the stopwatch and we're going to paste our expression into this uh, text field. So when you click out of there, it's gonna present you with an error and the error is because this expression is referencing a slider effect called stretch and squash that's supposed to be on this layer, but we need to add that to our layer. So what we're going to do is go to effects and presets, and we're going to search up um, slider, slider control. Let's drag that to our null object, and we're going to name this slider controller uh, stretch and squash. So as you can see, our, um, our error goes away, but so did the ball. And so how this expression works is basically when you scale the um, slider above 100, it starts to stretch out the ball in X space and minimize the ball in uh, Y space. This is going to be how we're going to retain the overall volume of this shape layer, but we're also going to be um, uh, shaping it in a in a way that looks like it's either slowing down or speeding up and that is the basic principle of um, squash and stretch so let's start it at a hundred one of the reasons that we decided to parent the ball to a null object and do our animation on the null is so that we can then go back to the ball and have a little bit more fine-tuned control over that and uh, as you can see when we applied that effect on the null it scaled up the ball a little bit so we're going to go to this ball shape layer and scale that back down closer to its original size something like that should do okay one thing that I forgot to mention is that we need to have this anchor point of this null object be at the bottom of the ball and I'll explain why in a second but basically it's going to be when you when the ball impacts the paddle it is going to scrunch down from the bottom uh, portion of this ball, not from the center. So let's uh, hit our Y button and we're going to adjust our anchor point on this null object. Okay, now once we've adjusted that, let's copy this ending keyframe or this beginning keyframe and paste it over the ending keyframe and that will retain our original height. Okay, now let's get into the nitty gritty of this tutorial. So let's start by adding a keyframe to this stretch and squash uh, effect here. And at the beginning of this, we're going to have the slider be at 100%. Now, as we get to the impact keyframes, we're going to go one keyframe behind that, and we're going to set another keyframe for below 100. Now, how far below 100 is up to you. The uh, farther you go, the more drastic of an effect it'll be. But I'm gonna leave mine at like 80%. Okay, let's go one keyframe forward for when the ball hits the paddle, and we're going to set this to be above 100%. Now again, how far above is all dictated by you and how much of an effect you want this to be. I'm gonna set mine to be 120. Okay, as we go back up to our original um, position here, our original um, height of the ball, we're going to set the slider to be 100. 
Okay, so now if we do a little RAM preview, you can start to see that as the ball is traveling from its original position to the impact keyframes, it is going to get elongated as if it's traveling quicker through the um, composition. And as we get to our impact keyframes, the next keyframe is going to be the ball squashed down on the paddle. And that represents like as soon as the paddle hits the, the ball, it is going to deform and is going to flatten and slow down incredibly quickly. And that's what is all represented by this uh, squash and stretch. After it hits off that um, the paddle, it is going to slowly make its way back up to its original size. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this animation by making it look a little bit more like our original here. So to do that, I'm going to right click and go new null object. And I'm going to take our original null and this paddle layer, and I'm going to parent that to this new null. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit so that we can use a little bit more space in our composition here. Okay, next I'm gonna hit G, and that's gonna call up the pen tool. I'm gonna make a new path from the middle of this ball layer. Let's actually go to the start of this uh, animation here. We will make a new path from the middle of this ball layer to the middle of this paddle, roughly. Okay, I'm gonna add a stroke here. I'm gonna change that a little bit. All right, now let's go to Window and then click on Create Nulls from Paths. This is a script that's provided in After Effects and it comes in handy quite a bit, it's pretty cool. Let's twirl down our path uh, shape layer here, and let's go into path, click on path, not keyframe it. Click on path, and then hit points follow nulls. Now we can get rid of this window. This is going to create two null objects that dictate where the, begin, the beginning and end of this line are. So the um, ending null object that's on our uh, paddle here, we can go ahead and parent that to the paddle, and then our top uh, no object where the uh, ball is we're going to parent that to the ball I'm going to rename this and then let's bring this object the path layer below ball so that it looks like it's behind the ball here okay great let's call up all of our keyframes and let's go ahead and go one frame forward and let's copy all these guys and then paste them and same thing for this layer Okay, this is going to make it so that it loops twice, and in order to achieve the um, changing background effect, we need uh, we need it to loop twice. First, let's uh, Command F or Control F will allow you to search within a layer, and I'm going to search up the color property. We don't need the stroke, so I can delete that, and I'm going to set a keyframe on color here. All right, so right when it impacts, we're going to move our keyframe one keyframe behind where it impacts. And now that we have impact, I can change the color to be something a little bit more drastic. Maybe this red that looks kind of cool. Okay, great. And now let's go to right where it impacts again. Go one frame behind that, copy and paste. And now if I right click on these, I can go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. All right, so now it's looping and we have the string attached, we have the background changing when it impacts. Let's do one more thing. We're going to go to new adjustment layer and I already searched it, but it's called noise and we're going to add noise to that, maybe about 20% and I'm not going to use a color noise. I'm gonna actually do two more things really quickly and that is I'm gonna change this white to be uh, something that stands out a little bit more next to this ball. Yeah, let's go a little cool purple. All right, that looks good. So we're going to copy this keyframe and paste it here. And one last thing that I wanna do really quickly is I want to have this ball come a little bit further out than it is right now. So I'm going to highlight all the position keyframes on this null object. And as you can see, I'm gonna go into my graph editor here and I'm going to select all of these keyframes that are down below. And I'm going to drag these down a little bit further so this comes out a little bit more. Something like that should be good. Alright, so that about wraps it up. I hope that you guys enjoyed making this scene with me and that you learned a little bit about how you can start incorporating squash and stretch into your animation styles. 
like I said before, it's a really fun effect to use and you can really start taking your animations to the next level. Send me any examples you guys make and peace out.